Good morning, everybody. Um, I just woke up this morning thinking I want to be in charge of what's happening in the sense that I want to be able to give it to God, but and not to go away thinking this virus is controlling me every day with fear. So I thought today I'd start by suggesting that we should all be giving thanks for something because I think when we're thankful and grateful for something it stops the anxiety it just cuts that fear away so say it to your families to your friends um, write it in your journal what you're thankful for today three things I'm so thankful that I know Jesus and that I can trust him. I'm so thankful for my family, my husband. I'm so thankful that the sun is shining today and I woke up and I can go for a walk. Amen. I'm going to pass you over to Johnny now. Um, I, I do apologise for the creaking um, chair. It's not my knees or my back, all right? It is this rather sort of squeaky chair, so I do apologise. Right, we're in, still in Isaiah 40, and uh, we're carrying on with some encouragement for comfort, but this is from God's creation. And uh, if you wanted to look in your Bible, um, we're really sort of uh, outlining verses 12 to verse 27. And, and it seems that having given them lots of truth to hold on to, he then goes on and encourages them from God's creation. And he says this twice in verse 21 and in verse 28. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? Uh, and what Isaiah is doing there, he, he's not saying, let me tell you something which you've never heard of before, or let me tell you something which you've never heard of. He's saying... Surely you know this, don't you? I mean, this is ABC stuff. This is kindergarten stuff. This is going back to the very beginning. You, you, we must know this. Uh, if you haven't learned this, then you haven't really begun. And then he outlines uh, what he wants to say about God's creation. And he goes through, a bit like in Job, actually, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Who has hurled the dust of the earth in a basket? Who's weighed the mountains on the scales? Who's understood the mind of the Lord? Uh, and in this, he, he's saying, he, he's pointing to creation. And he, I don't think he's saying, don't you realise God is big? And don't you realise that God is all-powerful? I think it's a little bit more than that. He's certainly saying, don't you realise that God is in control of this world? It's not out of control, it's kind of totally in control. Even this, the bad things and even this uh, virus that's happening is in God's control. But I think what he's saying is more than that. He's saying, now look, uh, you can trust him. Can you trust me, even though you don't understand? That's really behind this phrase um, where he says, who's understood the mind of the Lord or instructed him as his counsellor? In other words, are we still prepared to trust him, even though we really have not an idea of what's going on? And then he says, what's the alternative? What actually is the alternative? And the alternative, he says, to whom will you compare God? Verse 16. What image will you compare him to? As for an idol, a craftsman casts it, a goldsmith overlays it with gold and fashions silver chains for it. He looks for a skilled craftsman to set up an idol that will not topple. Well, the trouble with idols is that they do exactly that. They topple. Uh, however well crafted they are, however well uh, wealthy they are, all idols will topple. And I guess that in our fears and in our anxieties, it really brings to the surface, well, what are we actually really trusting in? What are we actually trusting in? You know, if, if ultimately our trust is in politicians or in the health service or in our finance or in everybody behaving or whatever it happens to be, if that is ultimately our trust, then that trust will topple. But our trust needs to be in the Lord himself. And God will use 
the politicians and he'll use people's behavior and he'll use certainly use the nhs and god bless the nhs but actually we need our eyes need to be fixed on the lord and not on our idols the things that we think are going to save us the things that we think are going to be the solution i just want to uh finish with um with a prayer for our medics uh, i'd love to name them by name um, but I'm in danger of missing somebody out. But I'm thinking of uh, Tracy Fisher and Ursie Mitchell. I'm thinking of um, Sarah and Rachel Riley. Okay. I'm thinking of Laura, La, La, uh, Laura. Laura Pitaway. Um, and even uh, our medics, our doctors like uh, Jonathan and Jane Pringle. Uh, I don't know whether Derek Connett has been brought back into service again, whether Angela Ricketts has been asked to come back. I don't know. But let's lift all our medics and our doctors to the Lord, whether we know them or not. And Father, we pray, dear God, for your protection around our medics. We pray for your protection around all those that care for the sick. Oh, I pray for, we pray for uh, Jax Kearney, who's in the uh, ICU unit at Gloucester Royal. Lord, would you protect them? Give them strength in their tiredness. Give them patience in their frustrations. Give them peace in any fears and anxieties that they have. Father God, we lift them to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. Stay indoors. Get some exercise, though, and uh, stay safe. God bless you.